Personnel of the Gambia Armed Forces have on Saturday paid a visit to um, several affected villages in Funi following the eruption of first tensions between the Senegalese soldiers and the MFDC rebels in customers last month. The leaders class led to the displacement of more than 5,000 residents. The visit seeks to restore hope and confidence to the residents of the villages affected by the conflict. As our Osman Jada reports, stability has returned and residents who fled to their lives are now returning to their villages. Details of that in this report. These men of the Gambia Armed Forces are not gearing up to fight in a war. Rather, they are thrilled by the passion for protecting the territorial integrity of the smiling coast of Africa. Raising the Gambian flag high to restore hope, peace and confidence for the Fonyi residents who are victims of the conflict between the Senegalese forces and the MFDC Freedom Fighters of Casamas. Approximately a month ago, it was reported that more than 6,000 people residing in Fonyi around the border belt with southern Senegal, Casamas, fled their house. Men, women, children and the old all rush to find safe heavens in order to protect themselves from a war they have no clue of. As we enter Katimba, we could sport life had returned to normalcy, but some empty houses and a football pitch were visible. The convoy journeyed several kilometers before reaching another village called Maraman. In this village, the narrative remains the same. We saw empty houses and kids waving at the convoy. We moved to the next village, Jikes, where women could be sported doing their daily chores and youth sitting at the banter bar. In Jikes, a lady is seen burning charcoal to put food on the table. From Jikes village, the convoy then proceeded to Funtang. Now comes a moment of joy and relief for these women and children as men and women of the Gambia Armed Forces perform their national duties. Life could be visible everywhere. Kids play with their mates and women are busy with their daily chores. A few minutes after vacating Funtang, the Gulf envoy entered a red zone, arguably the epicenter of the conflict. This is what remains of these casino farms. These farms were the victims of the January classes between the Senegalese and the MFDC forces. Army Piaro Captain Malik Sanyang was quick to show us where the bomb cells were landing. As we entered Balen, men could be seen relaxing under their mango trees, taking advantage of the nice breeze. We are in Balen village. This is where everything started in January. Right behind me, 150 meters away from here in those bushes. If you get there, you are now entering into southern Senegal, Kasimas. Abdullah Bojang is the Alkali of Balen. Receiving the officers, Alkali Bojang thanked Lieutenant Colonel Omar Bojang and his team for a job well done. Alhamdulillah. Tonya Tonya Koman to Hambarata Jambakele. Mbatata Jambake because Ntoliang Mbatata Sinyaw Fula. Thanks be to Allah. Follow, follow, we face serious challenges in the past month. month. We vacate our village twice during the first tension after two, two weeks another one erupted. The mission one was very severe. Cells were landing in our houses. Colonel Omar Boja and his team tried. The other ones helping with the soul. Everyone ran except for a few people. Now you are done. Don't move. Be bored. If you are tired, don't move. Don't run. Until you call on him, move. Don't run. Don't be jam. Until you can be on Mindy. Alkali Boja ordered the government of Adama Baro to help his people with food supplies. But how? But that's all. Don't remember Bora. But that's all. Back it. So that my day maro fang. Now your day maro so that you move my way. We are suffering. We need help. The bomb cells have killed most of our goats, sheep and cattle. In less than two minutes, we found our way into Karunol village. Peace to come. In this village, men who rely on cashew plantations for survival say they no more feel safe working on their cashew farms. From Balen, we are now in Karunor, another village which is part of the Red Zone. The village is not far from the border belt between the southern Senegal and the Gambia. Here you see um, life is returning back to normal. Mudlamin Kori is the Alkali of Karunol village. 
Alkali Kuli narrated the audios faced by his village. Kabir ni mama onkera. When the fighting erupted, we vacated to our relatives residing around Trans Gambia. However, after conducting several patrols, the men of Colonel Bojang asked us to return to the area because it is fully secure. From Karunor, the military convoy proceeded to Baipol village. At Baipol, we saw women harvesting mangoes in what looks like the village's most prominent mango tree. A few minutes later, our convoy entered another red zone that used to house a rebel camp. Red zone in Balen, now we've entered another red zone here between Baipal and Jilanfal. This you've seen is a crater which is created by a bomb source which have been landing here during the tensions between the MFDC forces and the Senegalese forces during the second wave of um, tensions which erupted around March. We are made to understand that somewhere around this end as well used to be a former rebel uh, camp and this zone is that is why it's widely considered as a major red zone. According to the chief of defense staff, when he spoke, his counterpart, he said they have no intention to launch into Gambia. It is not a deliberate um, intent for them to do it. But of course, uh, looking at the mechanisms, sometimes it does occur. From Baipal, we proceeded to Gilangfal village. As we entered the village, we could see a signboard warning, beware of landmines. As we enter, we could see women laundering clothes at a local pump. Ismail Abadi is the son of the Alcalo of Gilangfang village. We urged the government of Adam of Baro to see us as sons of the Gambia. We are under his responsibility. He should not ignore us like we are known Gambians. He should be very observant because we are sitting here with the conviction that we are Gambians. We then proceeded to the next village, Tamba Kunda village. In this village, some women could be sported laundering clothes as well, while men enjoyed a nice breeze coming from the mango trees. From Tamba Kunda, we proceeded to Siwal village, Batending, Jakin, and finally Opad village. This village has housed several refugees who came here to seek refuge in these compounds. However, the UNHCR has also fixed green tents here to accommodate more refugees. We caught up with the Imam of the village of Opat, Suleiman Sonko. You cannot sleep with an empty stomach. We have not received any food aid, but less of money. We urge the government to support us with the feeding of the refugees. The Gambia and Senegal shares very close borders, and this landmark here is one of those um, barriers separating the Gambia and Senegal. Right now, I am entering into southern Senegal, which is Casamas, and right over there are uh, uh, buildings there, and the uh, people live used to be there, actually. So you can see how close this place is to the Gambia. Uh, well, you can see the road is very bad. That's one of the things that um, really affected us. Um, but and the people are very accommodative and they really accepted and appreciated um, what we actually did. And uh, of course, we were able to protect some of the animals who, who were at, actually, if they were not giving them food or water, they could have gone astray, they would have gone left. But because of um, the patrols and the standing patrol that we conducted, you can see we are in the Kasu season. So because um, sometimes people were afraid um, to get into their farms to pick the Kasus, but we, we stand there for two, three hours to allow them to harvest and later they, they, they move. As you had uh, some of these community leaders, what they actually said. Amidst all these tensions, the Gambia armed forces have been burning the midnight candles with their weapons to protect the territorial integrity of the tiny West African country by patrolling the affected areas daily. Around the major red zones which have been affected by the conflict between the MFDC forces and the Senegalese soldiers. We hear from the testimonies from uh, the residents themselves that life is coming back to normal. However, most of the residents have revealed that life is normal as usual because most of them are finding it difficult to um, have a proper survival as most of them depend on their cashing out farms and some also go to the farms, uh, to the bushes to collect firewood to be 
able to put food on the table against this backdrop they are calling on the support of the government and all the relevant authorities to chip in and assist them so that they can live a peaceful life osman jata i africa news jifanga fonyi bintankara night district